welcome back for round two, round two, round two, and then tomorrow you get three. Much like uh, Jay Holiday. You remember that song? Take you to bed. Round two, round two. Matter of fact, oh. it's close to the three. How long you been sleep? Kisses. I know it's it's. This is kind of getting weird. Oh, All right, job. dude. Round. <laughs> yeah, I know. Can't help it, dude. Fell in love with R&B at a young age. Uh, round oh, two for the mock. If you want to check out round one, we got it on our channels. We posted it the day before. You're gonna get round three tomorrow. What's crack a lacking? It's your boy Broshmo. Just in case you did not know, so go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content, and let us know how you think we did in the comment section below. Let's have that nice, beautiful, sensual football discourse down there. Alex joins me from the Hail Mary podcast because we like mock drafts. So let's get to mocking. Alex, you're on the board. You take the NFC. You got Detroit. You went with KT. Right, because I couldn't yeah. get him for Houston, and it yeah. kind of complicated things for me. Where yeah. do you go okay. next? So, also the biggest faller of last round, Trent McDuffie, somehow slipped through everybody's fingers to get to number twenty-nine to us as well. So, Lions, you guys are having a banger draft. I think that either you go quarterback here with a guy like Tanner McKee, if we want to actually include him. <sighs> yeah, if we want to. That's a legit consideration for me right now. Or we get Jared Goff something he probably doesn't have much of, and that's receiving help. His running back's phenomenal. ARSB doing some solid some solid work. I, mean, I think TB's on the board. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at Traylon Burks here, but I'm also, I mean, just because we have to be a little bit realistic, George Pickens is a true number one body. So there's a potential if you want to look at a true outside boundary receiver, Pickens could be your dude. I just think that it's like, you know, Detroit is very gritty as a city and as a team. Oh, this guy. Broshno is trying to hold himself together because this is his own wording. I love that word. Regardless, (laughs) Traylon Burks is a gritty, mean, tough ass receiver. Also, Probably your best weapon is your tight end, uh, Hawkinson. So I think Traylon Burks fits a similar mold as a big, nice threat down the field. He might not separate very well, but damn, he scares the shit out of corners. I can tell you that for sure. So I'm going to go Traylon Burks out of Arkansas, giving you guys a nice, well-rounded draft. Ooh, yeah. that's interesting. Uh, you may not notice this. Uh, I was drinking my water and it hit me in the face. I did not uh, notice that. that yeah, was, yeah. Like uh, I'm rewatching the video for you. <laughs> yeah, dude. I just, I just cringed. Just oh, not a sponsor. <laughs> All right, so I got Texans. I went with uh, Leo. Yeah, yeah. Demarvin Leo in the first. Uh, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Um, <laughs> it's, in, it's fun to say like, yeah, I'm going to replace Tanner uh, or replace Davis Mills with his backup at Stanford. That's kind of a fun idea. I'm not doing it. That'd be hilarious. It would be hilarious. Uh, And actually, I have Carson Strong as the next quarterback on my board, so I, it's kind of a toss-up. I'm not going quarterback. If I'm going to forego quarterback in the first, then screw it. We have Will or we have Mills. Let's go ahead. Let's I guess see what we got in him. Not necessarily. It's just I, I'm hoping next year's yeah. a better quarterback class. So That's fair. let's go ahead. Let's build this squad up. Uh, ooh, and how how does one do that? That's a good question. <laughs> You're like on a roll right there. I, I was on a roll. Um, I'm not <laughs> gonna lie. I, a I, wall. I there, there's there was <laughs> there wasn't a plan on where I was gonna go with here. Uh, cause I, the, dude, like the edge class dude. is still sexy, dude. But ah, uh, they got Charles. Um, yeah. oh, what is it? who's that? The cat formerly out of Texas. Are you talking uh, about Wainu? Is it a Wainu? Uh, I don't. Oh, f- a Menahu. Charles Menahu. Menahu. There we go. Yeah, who's a, a guy that, he's, he's kind of versatile. He could kick inside. He uh, plays outside early downs, yeah. uh, which is similar to what they got in Leo. So we could double dip at edge. I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, I think I'm going to go with linebacker. I'm going to take the upside that's okay. Christian Harris. Mm. Okay. I don't blame you on that one. Yeah. That's it, pretty good. It, it was kind of tough. Um, yeah. 
kind of tough. But I didn't want to really double dip on edge. Uh, and really, their linebackers, is, it's patchwork right now. Like, they yeah. have a bunch of one- to two-year vets. Um, mm. Like, one-year contracts, not like yeah. two years in the game. <laughs> not really vets <laughs> at that point. True. I was thinking of Jaquan Brisker at that spot, just for value. Uh, they got Lonnie Johnson and Justin Reed. I'm. I think yeah. those are two very good um, well, like corners. Reed. If they had, uh, I like Reed too, and I think Lonnie Johnson. Keep in mind, Lonnie Johnson converted to safety last year. The guy's still yeah. learning the position, so. Fair. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought it was fair, so that's why I did it. <laughs> All right, man. Jacksonville Jaguars. Douche. Yeah. I know. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> it's that's just me. Uh, I went with Evan Neal in the first round. It was kind of a no-brainer for me. I think at this point, it's like, yeah, uh, don't know what the future holds for Josh Allen. I imagine they retain him. But they're not getting Mm -hmm. much out of, in terms of any other pass rusher. Like Smoot, I think, is their next best pass rusher. And he's more of a rotation guy. He's more of a guy that you actually kind of like put over the tackle or throw to five tech. Like, you know, I'm, I'm looking for that true burst of explosiveness. I'm taking Adam Anderson, man. They thought they had it with uh, Chazon. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. I'm going with... Get him out of here, here, man. I'm going with Adam Anderson. I mean, I love Adam. Interesting fit, but I like Adam. It is interesting. Uh, I was kind of having a bit of difficulty deciding, like... Like, I was thinking, like, Brisker, potentially. I was thinking maybe I just go Mm. ahead and jump on one of the corners, because... They need help at corner. So, but they shouldn't. I, they, sh- you know, they shouldn't, but you know, you keep going for it until you get it right, man. Sure. Uh, the New York Jets. I went with a uh, Tyler Linderbaum and Derek Stanley. I'm actually really happy about uh, yeah. that in the first. Um, there's a perfect fit here. There's a perfect fit here. I, I just, I love one guy. Well, I'm, th- I'm thinking one guy. Say the one guy. I don't, don't, don't want to say too much. I don't think you're giving away anything. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. Um, I don't, I don't want to go with Edge here. I think they actually got solid. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're thinking one guy. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was thinking, I was thinking of Zach Harrison. Zach Harrison. Yeah, I definitely don't want Zach Harrison here. Uh, dude, they they extended Myers. You get um. Yeah, Carl Lawson back next year. At that point, you're really just asking for a guy to get lost in the sauce, lost in the rotation. Fair. Um, ooh. Actually, I, like I, I was like. thinking of going linebacker. I was thinking about Brandon Smith because really they have nothing in linebacker right now, and it's pretty de- – you know what? No, okay, yeah. I talked myself back into it. I'm going to go with Brandon Smith. I was going to consider safety, but you know what? I like it. Yeah, let's get a freak athlete, which Brandon Smith is. Let's kind of be the like Fred Warner because they they don't have a guy like that right now. Also, screw you because that's my next pick. What do you mean? <laughs> you got Blake Martinez and and Tay Crowder. <laughs> exactly. So that sucks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was really hoping for that. Maybe next round we can get a guy with 30% oh, missed man. tackle rate along with absolutely no play time. But, <laughs> oh, that really hurts. That hurts me inside. Um, <laughs> at number 37 for the New York Giants, we already have Aiden Hutchinson along with Darian Kennard. It's been a good draft. Now, unfortunately, it could have been an even better draft if my good old boy Brushmo here did not decide to totally screw it over with Brandon Smith being taken, but that does not exclude us from trying to go and make the most of it. I think maybe you could double dip at the offensive line. I don't think that's a feasible option. I think we might just still go linebacker solely because that is probably our next position of biggest need. I don't think, I mean, oh, this is a really hot take, but running back could be a place we go. I just don't know how much longer Saquon's going to be effective on the I did that in my three-round mock. I did it in the third round, though. Dude, I'm just saying Brees Hall at this spot might not be a terrible idea. 
Um, yeah, because receivers. I don't, I don't know if it's a good idea, dude. I have a bad feeling that we're. I'm gonna get a ton of shit, dude. Are you taking a running back? I'm. Is a sixty percent chance I'm going Brees Hall here. <laughs> there's, this is coming from a, the guy who's like, ah, oh, you know what? I don't know why receivers in need. I just don't think receivers in need on this team. It's not. I agree, but yeah, going running back is. I mean, what else do you need on the offense? You want to go Tanner McKee at this spot? And like, I don't okay. think Danny Dimes is worth replacing right now. Yeah, I think and then Danny... on the defense, like, you know, uh, linebackers the big issue. Secondary, not really. Um, defensive front, we've already addressed that. So there's so no one on the offensive back. line that like tickles your fancy. I mean, yeah, but it's like, do I don't know what Darian Kennard's gonna be. I don't want to draft Darian Kennard to be my right tackle of the future and draft another right tackle. You know what I mean? Like that just seems like it's double dipping. Okay. Unless why not go with the interior? Because there's absolutely nobody worth it on the interior. What you're going to go to Zion Johnson here? Or are you talking about Sean Ryan or Jackson Kirkland? Yeah. Sean Ryan fits. Yeah. I was going to say there's a few of those tackle guys that could play guard. I mean, you're, you're kind of like playing with fire. It's like, Oh, now I got guys that I, I thought one would turn to right tackle and I got two guards. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's not, it's That's not what a I'm bad saying. thing. I know. I just don't want to totally overreach on a linebacker right now. I'm going to go Sean Ryan. I think all, it, it's actually quite reversed. I think Darian Kennard will end up being the tackle and Ryan will be the guard. But I am quoted as saying Sean Ryan has Hall of Fame potential at offensive guard. Yeah, I think he's that dominant. As an uh, interior off the lineman. Yeah, he's so, got a big fan of him. pretty game uh, in 2020 against yeah. KT. So. Against, yeah, no, I love Sean Ryan. Uh, he is, he's up there in my tackle to consideration. So big fan of him. I think he can play that right tackle. I think he'll be a better day one right tackle than Darian Kennard, who can play guard and learn how to play tackle. So don't know what you're going to do there in the long run, but both guys fit exactly what you're looking for. Running back is a huge need. You might also want to just address that in free agency, though. Just yeah. get some dudes. Like Honestly, that's probably a pretty abundant room uh, in free agency. And then linebacker, just it's not good enough. Yeah, no, I agree. My next linebacker is like a third rounder. So. Because uh, yeah. I, I assume Same. Henry, uh, Henry uh, Toto's uh, coming back. Mm. So do you want to treat him like he's returning? I was yeah, I was just gonna treat him like he's dead to me. I like Henry, but I like we'll, him too. We'll the athletic upside's way. great. The dude's got yeah, like no, one like of the more. highest missed tackle rates if he were yeah. to come out in this class among all the prospects. Yeah. Like the dude can track ball carriers, he just can't finish. He literally Paul Blark's the finish line. The so, mall cop reference for those Kevin James fans youngins. out there. <laughs> oh Lord. Now, I didn't talk you out of running back so I can draft one here because you know dang well I don't. I don't want to run it back. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I think a thing with the Dolphins is, listen, take the top guy off your board, maybe regardless of position, just draft talent, draft good players. I'm going Nick yep. Benito. Good pick. Great just, hit. You got on me for saying that you can go edge. The hell? Well, that's different, dude. This is a this is a scheme fit right here, man. Like this is this is Jamie Collins. He's not he's not exclusively a like you could even say Kyle Van Noy. He's not exclusively an edge guy. All right, fair, fair, fair. And that's just Case. me trying to justify my hypocrisy, probably. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> number thirty nine. You got the Falcons on the board. This is a team that could use a wide receiver. This is a team that could also use an edge player. When I'm looking at it, there are a lot more wide receivers I'd like at the beginning of the third than there would be edges that I like at the beginning of the third. There's a man who was on, I believe, what was it, PFN or or PFF's top 10 risers? And his name's Zach Harrison. <laughs> oh, I was like, who could this be? I, I was legitimately lost. Uh, so I think going after somebody with pass rushing upside it's just what you need to do. You need to help out that defense. You got a solid corner, so you're locking down the pass game. Now you can allow the pass rushers to do a little bit more. I think it's the right move. There's just a huge drop-off after Zach Harrison to Brandon Cox. 
he might not be a perfect scheme fit. I'm thinking of it. I don't really exactly see him as one, but I just genuinely don't care because you're, you need to draft upside at this point and what you're doing right now isn't working. So Zach Harrison, the Ohio state university go on. So what if I told you Brandon Cox was my 21 edge, my edge 21. That's BS. It's not BS. Dude. He doesn't. Damn, 21. That is so And it's rude. not because he's bad. There's some guys I really oh, like some, in here, dude. I just think that there's a big drop off after Zach Harrison to the next guy. Um, I have three guys in between uh, or before Zach Harrison right now. You're crazy. I get I, yeah, I get you know, it. I get I get oh, it. The I, dude's unpolished, but he's got he's got tremendous upside. Oh, that, oh. I mean, we're gonna the hear these guys' names soon enough since I'm high on them, so yeah, that's fair. So number 40, you got Washington, and I think a legit need is offensive line. Brandon Sheriff, probably not gonna return. So you could look at somebody like Thera Mumford to be a perfect scheme fit. Plug him in, play him. There you go. Or you can look at tackle. Cornelius Lucas, probably not going to last too much longer there. And I think they got uh, Charles Leno. Did they get Leno? I yeah. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's playing really he's good He's not going to be there. Left. Yeah, I don't think that he's going to be there much longer either. Looking at tackles, Trevor Penning has unbelievable upside. Somebody who would be very fun on this squad. I know that since they got Cosby, it shows that they actually like guys with some athleticism. Because that was probably the best trade of Cosme was that he was athletic, but he was good all around. There, Mumford wouldn't be a bad option if you just want to test a dude out at tackle, but have the hopes of him being a guard. Jackson Kirkland just he just doesn't fit what I think of when I'm looking at Washington. You're I don't know right. about you. I just I, I just can't see it. I'm gonna go Trevor Penning here. You go upside. It's a guy who you don't need exactly to play at an extremely high level from the get go, but he's an absolute mauler. He's a freak. I'm going Trevor Penning. Interesting. Yeah. What do you think of it? Uh, I don't mind it. I think the other only guy I would think about would be Nicholas uh, Petit Freer. Yeah. Yeah. And th- then I got a guy that's – he's got a lot of upside, but uh, he kind of questioned his – well, then again, I, you could say the same thing about Pennon, but I was going to say you question his um, level of competition. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's like – I don't even think he's on here, though. Pennon just has that upside, man. Oh. I'm just saying – like he has some legit upside for the Eagles. I never thought I would look into this category. Quarterback. But I'm looking at George Pickens here as an interesting large boundary receiver. Dude, low second key, rounder. I kind of love Chris Olave as a sleeper pick for the uh, Eagles. The They're first. not going to go wide receiver back to back to back firsts. No way in hell. Well, yeah, if they if they were, yeah, they're not going to do it because they're not smart. Dude, keep hitting on a position. You tell me, Chris Olave is not better Jalen Rager. No, he is, but I just don't think you need to give up on Jalen Rager. You I don't have that- to. The, all these guys are interchangeable in the slot. You could literally go three wide. But do you want to go New York Giants with having a homogenous receiver core, like New York Giants back when they had Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, etc.? Yeah. Or do you want to have mean, a variation? I feel like that's still a variation, like. Like, as much as, like, yeah, okay, Olave is, like, this deep threat. He could also take stuff off the screen. Keep in mind, this guy's still an Ohio State receiver. He's still a good route runner. Just Mm -hmm. because Wilson's a better, like, intermediate threat doesn't mean that Olave isn't, you know? but Olave's great. I'm I'm not denying that. But I think the value at linebacker is something that you guys should look at. Again, if we're head, if we're treating Henry Teoto as somebody who's going to be not return or who's well, no you could you, you could still consider him on the board he's just dead to me <laughs> that complicates <laughs> things damn you son of a bitch <laughs> so i would look at henry teoteo here but also like dude george pickens like actually getting a true x receiver you got Devonte smith who's an excellent separator um i'm gonna treat henry teoteo as somebody who's gonna return as well i'm gonna do that just I because it's not fair for him too yeah, I think that he's going to anyways. Uh, we're going to treat him like that. I think I'm going to go George Pickens here, man. I'm going to do it. It's not bad. You got all these picks. I mean, you could only hit up so yep. many different positions, you know? Yeah, but I think that the upside is there. He's a true X receiver. You take him. Uh, he is a, he's a perfect complement for a guy like Devontae Smith, who you probably want to distract the safeties and stuff from 
just targeting him uh, at his slender frame. So you have a guy in the slot in Rager, you have Devontae Smith, and now you have Pickens, and you have Goddard too. It's the makings of a good, really good receiver core, and you're not blowing a first on it. So that's why I like it. Number 42, the Bears. The Bears. Bears I'm going I'm going all offensive line here, uh, all the way. I'm looking at dudes who are much larger. So Nicholas Petit Frere, somebody who I'm heavily considering here. You you said that he said something about wanting to play more on the left side, which is well, interesting. Well, he says he's more comfortable on the left side. He's still graded is, out really well on the right. But yeah, I know he's really good on yeah. the right. But be fair, somebody, Kevin Jenkins also traditionally played the right side too in college. Yeah. So. Yeah. Is Tevin Jenkins playing left or right? I thought he's playing right. Uh, they listed him as left. Really? Yeah. Uh, bugs the hell out of me. Depth chart um, uh, subject to change. <laughs> that That is true. There's someone who does play right tackle and plays it pretty well. People oh, don't like him. Man, you're talking the mountain? I'm talking the mountain. This is a signature pick for me. They like monstrosities who can just overwhelm the hell out of people. It's apparently what the Bears are looking for in offensive linemen. It's what they get again. Daniel Fail LA, 6'9, 380 pounds. He is the better version of Jordan Mailata. You get to plug him in, play him, light it up. Dang, yeah. dude. That's interesting. I like I like having a little bit of fun. Yeah. No, no, no. Dude, the minute he says, I was like, oh, he's talking the mountain. The mountain. <laughs> dude, I think he's a freak. I love him. Yeah. Big fan of him. Um, I think at this point, uh, I was actually gonna consider offensive tackle because like George Fan's been playing good football, but you never know. Especially with injury and whatnot. And I think Micah oh, or uh Micah, Makai Becton, he's a guy that can play both right and left. So I was like, I was thinking about going Nicholas Petit Ferrer. Uh wow. I'm gonna go with Dwan Brisker. Ooh, Juwan I Brisker, like that. Dude, is, yeah, I this, like that. I think this is, this is sexy because I really don't think Marcus May comes back. So, <laughs> no, I don't think he fits the Marcus May role though. Yeah, yeah, but, no, you're not, you're not wrong. But I do like him around the line of scrimmage anyway. Yeah, like this guy I, eats up everything underneath. He mm -hmm. his route recognition so good. He's gotten a lot better. He's improved a lot because I was originally like, dude, what's up with the hype on this Jaquan Brisker guy? He's taking a step. So. Huge fan of that pick right there. I like that. But also, I, I the Jets, I mean, you look at the tackles. They're not really skinny-ass dudes. Like They're big. Petit Ferrari is, is, yeah. The, he's the only guy with some meat on him right now. I mean, you could talk about Zion Nelson, but it's like. I have him coming back. He's yeah, literally having too. such a similar year Down as right last here. year. It's like, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm hoping he hasn't plateaued, and I'm hoping he takes an jump in development next year i get that number 44 the seahawks they need a corner desperately on the outside they traded for sydney jones which is great uh traded away who was that they traded who did the steelers um i'm bugging on his name he was a slot corner as well but they need a boundary desperately darian kendrick i mean the seahawks are perfectly fine taking dudes with criminal records as it is he has the most upside I think he's a freak. I have him as a first rounder, and I think it's just the best value. Yeah, no, it's real good value, dude. Yeah, enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, so um, this is the Colts pick. I'm taking Nicholas Petit Frere. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I, I mean, want him falling to the Steelers. <laughs> like, yeah, that's yeah. like my favorite pick, dude. It worked out so well. It's like, all right, Eric Fisher. Like, even if he comes back, it's like is what it is. Like, you yeah. saw how bad that offensive line looks once like even just one piece is out of place man yeah so just getting consistent to see there is huge so i went with charles cross in the first mm -hmm. oh um like i don't mind going corner here like roger mccreer could be solid yeah um here let's just see what oh, dude there's a lot of good players available He's a young senior. Yeah, dude. Like Martin Emerson's also a good fit here. It's just it's a bit rich for me. Um, I mean they're 
I could go on the interior, like Theron Mumford's like yeah, it's safe. Uh yeah. I'd rather get a center though. So I'm probably not gonna go there. Yeah, I guess we stick to the corner class. I'd agree. Oh, I mean, dude, that, that, that front seven's playing pretty good. I mean, I mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. Devontae Wyatt out of Georgia. That feel like I, it's not a need, but gosh, it sounds sexy. Well, is he on the board? Uh, I don't think he's in this. Uh, I don't think he's in here. Yeah, Wyatt's a beast. Yeah, dude. No, he, he made himself yeah. some money. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't see him. Wait, they got a. Yeah, he's not on here. Oh no, he is in here. He is. Yeah, you got type him in and hit find more or whatever it is, or try again or something. I don't know. Oh yeah. But am I picking him? Devontae Wyatt. He's Over just not listed. Corner. Yeah, he's just not listed, dude. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's a fun fact. I don't think I'm going with him. I think I'm going to stick with the corner position. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll go Roger McCreary. It's sure. just a shame. Actually, I kind of liked him for Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy that he's not going to Pittsburgh, though. Yeah, no. Nah, he's playing really good football this year. Yeah. Oh, Pittsburgh. So, me and your Steelers, man. Here we go again. Um, uh, Y'all love Zach Bannon so much, man. I don't know if we do. Start drafting tackles. Oh, well, I mean, you got Dan Moore. Uh, Dan Moore's doing pretty good, dude. Dude, he is. No lie. Like, yeah. I, that was, I, that was I a miss I on my Yeah, part. I don't mind saying that's a that's a miss on my part if he ends up working out. I don't mind. I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't actually scout him. <laughs> uh, I, I looked at him at the senior bowl, and I was like, oh, my gosh, dude. You're, yeah. you're like a – you're not going to be into my top 300. It happens. True. <laughs> I think um, there's a position that is listed as a need that you should probably look at. Uh, like, oh, I see corner. I'm, if you're talking about wide receiver, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, Jahan Dotson's fun, but... I don't think Jahan Dotson fits. I you know. Yeah, because I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't think Deontay Johnson's like I. I think he needs to play more on the outside. Mm. So like, I wouldn't mind having Dotson come in and be like, mm. Mm. "There's a guy who I think would be a true number one that is still on this board." David Bell. No. no. Even though he is good, he's good. He he's good. moved up my board. I like him better as a number two, just because the separation yeah. concerns. Yep. Uh, the Same. dude's a monster, though. Oh, Jamison Williams is still on the board. Dang, dude. This is why. I, this is why I need to have my stuff still up, dude. He's my yeah. number five wide receiver too. Um, I'm pretty sure he might be my number two or three. Yeah. No, he's pretty good. He's so good. Dang, dude. I think he'd be true number one, dude. Even though he doesn't have to do a chase. Chase can be that number one. He can develop into it. Which is fine. I mean, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Like, no, same. Oh, uh, Matt Corral. What, what do I go for? Protect? Like, okay, okay, okay. If I, if, who am I really getting at this point? I know Jackson Kirkland's still on the board. Yeah. And, I mean, there's a good chance he might end up being a guard as well. So. Trey Turner. Yeah, no, I mean, if y'all keep him, he's on a one year deal, ain't he? That's what I was saying. You could be replaced. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. My bad. My bad. Yeah. We're Ooh, there. This is tough. Because I haven't made a big board, big board. I just have like individual rankings. Yeah. Ooh. Um, you know what? Mm. What do you think? For me, I would target Jackson Kirkland first because yeah, after seeing that's how they, what I'm thinking, actually. Yeah. yeah. I saw them target Kendrick Green over the kid out of Whitewater. Um, forgetting his name right now, but on the Broncos. So it's like, oh, um, Quinn and Miners. Quinn Quinn Miners, yeah. Quinn Miners. So, yeah. So once they did that, I think they started saying, we're willing to go to a lighter tackle with less of an anchor. Yeah, I guess I'll go with yeah, I'll go with Kirkland. Yeah. Yeah. Solid. Um, New England Patriots. This one's a bit interesting. 
You don't need much. Don't need much, which is always a good place to be, you know. Not needed yeah. much. Um, Trent Brown hopefully comes back healthy. I think this is not a bad place to get a, a pro potential project with a lot of upside at tackle. I don't know if he's on here. Um, yeah, he on? I don't think there's anybody on here. Yeah, uh, it's going to be uh, Bernhard Raymond out of Central Michigan. He made Bruce Feldman's oh, uh, yeah. freaks list. Yeah, he's not in here. Yeah. Yep. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he's not on here, but it is what you it is. You think he's going to make the second round? Dude's got a lot of upside, man. I think he might pass a few guys. Like Kirkland, who's had struggles, like... I think there's that potential. Like he's gonna be in my top ten tackles probably. Like the dude's upside is huge, and he's been like, like the dude. Okay, backstory: former tight end. Mm -hmm. And this guy, like, he wasn't a great tight end, but like, still having that athleticism, he put on good weight. Like, and like he's been dominant. The only sack he's allowed this year was against Texas. Yeah. So. Yeah, I kind of like him. You want to like take him? him? I am going to take him. So who do you want to use as a filler? Uh, uh, I just put in Ber uh, took Bernard. Uh, I don't know who this cat is. But... I was going to take Kellen Deitch at Arizona State. Oh, dude, no, don't do that. You did it? I mean, yeah. Hey, you're the one with the that the people are actually seeing their board. Oh, that's so. fair. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Deitch is actually like a legit prospect to me, like day two prospect. Really? Yeah, I actually, I really like how he's playing. And I think he's got guard flexibility um, if he doesn't work out at tackle. Former Texas a and ugh. Man, I'm getting hot and bothered just thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Denver Broncos. Um, could go tackle. You know what? Um. Mm, mm. Mm. Tackle, 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 tackle. Yeah, but I mean, at this point, how much? Um, how, I'm not willing to like sacrifice, you know, just value. Yeah. So, gotta go look, run through the top guys on my board. Like, honestly, um, Williams is a consideration because, like, they gotta extend uh, Cortland Sutton, right? They're going to. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in all the likelihood, they are, but, yeah, you know. Um, I mean, Edge could be an option here. Mm hmm. You know what? Yeah, I think Edge is an option here. Okay. I'm going to go with Jermaine Johnson out of Florida State. Hmm. He's a beast. Dude is like, he gets He's stuck on tackle sometimes, but like, dude, he, everything he does looks physical. Like, he mm -hmm. is, th he's a thick boy, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Number 50. San Francisco, 49ers. Who I have a guy for this, and I think there's a chance that you might like it. Who do you think uh, it is? I know a guy that I liked giving them, uh, though I he's in the third round, is Wandale. I like him I'm coming in a receiver. slot. Yeah. I know. Th yeah. Again, this was something I did in the third round, and it was like, oh, yeah. gosh, I feel so right. Oh. Uh, um, you know, Martin Emerson's actually a really good scheme fit. Um, oh, wait, that's exactly what I was going to do. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. They need a cornerback desperately. And Martin Emerson's like a press dude. He can fit perfectly. Oh yeah, oh. dude. And they run such a v large variety of like different zone so I, coverages there at Miss, uh, mm -hmm. Mississippi state. Yeah. I think his upside is Richard Sherman. Ooh, I like that. I like that. So that is good outside to have. Yeah. Uh, ooh, well, that would have been nice actually for the Raiders pick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, sitting here, I think I'm going to just improve the interior. Devonte Wyatt is a freaking beast and he deserves okay. to go. Sounds good. Devonte Wyatt. Dude's a monster, man. And I can't wait, dude. Jalen Carter. That's going to be the interior guy out of Georgia that I'm stupid high on back. Uh, Who? Jalen Carter, he's coming out in okay. uh, 2023. Number 88, man. He's a monster. Dude, Georgia knows what the hell they're doing. Uh, I don't know what they're doing, but they need to continue doing it. Yeah, they breed monsters. They recruit monsters. 
Yeah. The Vikings. Damn. I wish Jaquan Brisker were on the board. I'd take him up and I'd snatch him in a heartbeat. Yeah, dude. That'd be not the situation. Not the case. Uh, I don't know why it says interior defensive lines that big of a need. They do have, like, they probably have someone coming up on contract. Um, probably Michael Pierce coming up sometime soon. Well, I know his contract was on hold on the opt out year. Yeah. So but, maybe. This is a, this is a fun team for me to think about because I don't exactly know exactly where to go <laughs> because quarterback with Desmond Ritter doesn't seem like a terrible idea. I know you don't like him or Tanner McKee, Carson Strong. Yeah, I, I think either uh, of those guys be fine if you hate Kellen with, Mond. I I just didn't see anything from Kellen Mond. Nah, he looked I stiff, I wasn't that high on him. I mean, I wasn't that high on him either. You had him lower, I think. Than I, I had him a lot lower than a lot of people. Yeah, I still had. I don't say QB seven, but no, yeah, I was still. I was on the Jamie Newman hype train. Yeah, I had Jamie Newman in the same situation. I think that you. This is tough for like for Vikings fans to hear because they're like, we don't need that. Um, you guys got the corner, so that's good, right? Linebacker, there's just no one on the board. I just, I can't. I can't do that for y'all. Same thing with the interior defensive line. I'm going to take a shot on a quarterback. You know, if it doesn't work, try, try again. I think that Desmond Ritter could be exi- – Desmond Ritter is pretty much a better version of Kellen Mond, though, in my eyes. But are we considering Tanner McKee for this? Because I'd pull the trigger nah, on him let's right go here. ahead and take Tanner McKee yeah. out. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, we're going to take Carson Strong. Do with some crazy upside. <laughs> we were just talking Desmond Ritter. <laughs> well, no, I was just saying like Desmond Ritter is just basically a minor upgrade over, over what you have. I gotcha, I gotcha. Uh, Carson Strong's worth taking a shot on. I think we because... also agree that Spencer Rattler's not coming out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Carson Strong, um, I know y'all hate it, but take the guy with the upside. Uh, he's perfect to sit under Kirk Cousins and develop because Kirk is actually pretty good with his progression, so oh, I like it. Yeah. Who would you have taken on the spot? Man. Um, oh, that's a bit tough. That's a bit tricky. Mm-hmm. Mm, I feel like I would have been back into the probably best player available. Maybe I would have. I may have played with the edge class with this pick. Yeah. There's um, okay. a couple guys. Next pick, they're though. not great. Oh, actually, one guy is exceptionally great. It's just a stupid small sample size. Yeah. I mean, he's coming off for, of ACL. Yeah, that's a big oof. For number 53, for the Falcons, I'm stuck between two players. Jamison Williams and Desmond Ritter. Yeah, I, I think I just, Desmond Ritter would be one of them. Yeah, Desmond Ritter has to be in this conversation. I don't know where else he's going to go, to be honest. If, if he slips past here, I don't know if he actually gets selected in this part of the draft. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But... I think it's time to say Matt Ryan, he's coming close to the end of his career. Desmond Ritter actually is a really good quarterback. He's uplifting Cincinnati to natty levels. So I'm going to go with Desmond Ritter. I think it's time. Take a shot. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm still on the board, though. So with number 54, Brilliant. the Saints, I got Chris Alave. And... Broshma, do you think that Michael Thomas is actually going to stay? Uh, I or be an impact? Huh? I don't. I think he's gone. It, Given that. I mean, it seems like they're disgruntled, like both yeah. parties, but at the same time, it's like super passive aggressive, you know? So Yeah. Also, I don't even know if this would change my pick. I'm going to go Jamison Williams out of Alabama. You're going to double dip on the receiver? Back back. Double dip it on the receiver. I don't mind it. Um, Wando Robinson's another consideration. If you think he's going to return, then you could use him as like a legit slot weapon. But Jamison Williams is a freak, man. He is he is insane. I've been on the hype train since the moment I watched him. He He's crazy. Big, big, big progression this year. I'm all for progression. So seeing him take that jump from Ohio State to Bama, I love it. Yeah, he would have been a guy I considered for this pick yeah. here. Um, we're oh, actually yeah. going to see the first tight end come off the board. That's I'm fair. I'm going to go with Isaiah Likely. 
that's a good pick. I, lo- I love Isaiah. I love what they could potentially do with him. Like, yeah. he do- oh, man, he's not going to be much of a blocker. And I don't care. I don't care for you. So that's something that's like a lot of teams are willing to sacrifice. Oh, they're not that much of blockers. Yeah, what can they do for me in the receiving game? And I think yeah. a lot likely can do a lot. Listen, if they have Austin Eckler pass blocking, I don't think they care that much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, with this pick, um, Cleveland Browns, Ooh. I'm going to actually, I don't know if OBJ is long for the roster. I'm going to go with David Bell here. A guy you can just dump the ball off to and he can just create. You can get fun, I think, mm-hmm. with him. Have um, So, yeah, no, nah, I think I'm going to do that. I think that it's wrong that a guy like Jahan Dotson's still on the board. Yeah, I know. I considered him, but uh, so, I don't know. They don't play enough um, three wide receiver sets there. I and, think it's time that Jahan goes, though. Which is fair. It no, de- he, sh- he deserves to. Yeah, uh, man. He plays perimeter at Penn State, right? Which I think he can do in the NFL. As do I. I think he's the right fit for the Green Bay Packers. You need to continue stretching the field. You got Mario Rodgers, who's a good separator in the middle of the field. Jahan can stretch the field as well. Use that cannon that Jordan Love has. I'm going to go Jahan. It's best player available. Oh, yeah. No, that sounds good for Oh, me. God. Cowboys... Son of a biscuit. What do I do for you? Um, huh. Can we talk about wide receiver? I don't know. Oh. Do you think Michael Gallup's going to return? No, but I also like Cedric Wilson, and they also got He's doing a really Noah good job. Brown. Yeah, the like, guy. Cedric's doing a good job. Tight end-wise, Dalton Schultz is somehow coming out as like a monster. My boy. <laughs> yeah, it's like I would still consider a tight end here. I think Edge isn't a terrible group to go back into. You know, if you want to go after Nolan Smith, I think that's a guy with some upside to play behind Randy Gregory. What would you what would you do at this pick? I'm curious. Oh man, dang it. I'm sitting here trying to figure out the Ravens pick. Right? Dude, actually, I, I know exactly who I want. The guard position is a little bit suspect right now, I think. Um, I think the center position, if anything, is the most suspect. <laughs> Well, right now the center position is not two bueno on the board. I mean, I think what you're you not that wrong. Dude, the, yeah, the next dude guy from Arizona has State more like yeah. For me, Donovan West is more like late, yeah. I guess closer. to... I mean, we're in that stage, honestly. Yeah, uh, you can definitely look in that realm. I don't know if Connor Williams is. He's coming up on a contract as well, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, like, I couldn't tell you. I'm not in uh, contract mode right now. You're not in contract mode right now. So for me, um, actually, yeah, Connor Williams is up for a contract. And I don't know if the Cowboys can retain both an, a high-end edge like Randy Gregory, who's going off, and a guy like Connor Williams, who's been pretty good. There's a guy who fits perfectly as a plug-and-play player at his exact position. And a left tackle might be something to look at for the future. There are Mumford's on the board. And I think that's going to be the right decision. Yeah. Yeah. Talk myself into it. Yeah. That was actually who I was looking at for the Ravens. Yeah. So nice. That would be a good pick for the Ravens. Oh, well, uh, that would have been, huh? Yeah. <laughs> number 59, though. Whew. This might be a very hot take. How many years is James Conner signed? It doesn't so, matter. I'm considering getting Zach Charbonnet at this point. Going balls the to first, the wall. Uh, why, or first running back off the board? I think he fits a little better than Brees. Brees yeah. is more of an all-around all, all around dude. I think Which that Zach works better yeah. in, in RBBC. Um, okay. I, I, Brees is above uh, Zach for me, but oh, I know that that might not be a very popular pick. I don't really care what the popular pick is. I'm just trying to think about what would be a good one. Legitimately, I think – I mean – Zach's going from a UCLA offense that isn't too far off, in my opinion, from what you can get in Arizona. I mean, it is Chip Especially Kelly, with his so. quarterback. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, you look at DTR. Imagine DTR as being really good in everything. It's pretty much Kyler Murray. So, okay. Zach has that upside. I mean, he 
I know, like, he has a really good character when he doesn't get the fame in his head. He's, like, a really cool dude, and he's one hell of an athlete. He's very dedicated to making sure his body stays healthy. And when he goes downhill, he's unbelievable. He's probably the best running back athlete in this class. I've never seen a dude who can truck a 300-pound defensive lineman, but also jump over a six foot two defensive back like Zach can. He is just that freaky. And he got even more athletic in college. Tight end, you got Zach Ertz. I think you guys re-sign him, bring him back for one year, test him out again. I'm gonna go Zach. Represent my guy. That's fair. That's fair. It's a risky move, man. I, I know that's not very popular, but you just gotta uh, do what you gotta it's do. It's not bad. It's not bad. Oh man, I'm just having I'm having all kinds of trouble right now. Um, uh, I, you know what? No, I'm not. All right. I'm going to go with the defensive interior because, uh, Ooh. Derek Wolf's getting up there. Perry on Winfrey dude is a pass mm-hmm. rushing nightmare. I don't know how he holds up in run defense, but you could sign a guy. You could get run defense yeah. late. Like it run Easy. defense is literally secondary yeah. to what can this guy do from a pass rushing standpoint? And the answer mm-hmm. is everything. Yeah. Oh, I agree. It's a really good pick. Um, for the Rams? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> like, a guy who I've actually picked pretty consistently for them is Abina Eze. Like, a high-end um, developmental tackle. Oh, yeah. I just don't know if he goes in round two. I just don't think he has a talent to go round two, especially after we've seen all these tackles go off the board. It's just... I mean, if yeah, Zion was, Nelson were coming it out... It was literally a mad dash to tackles. Just so you yeah. didn't have to deal with like some developmental guys, really. Exactly. Uh, tight end. I mean, I know that they got Jacob Harris last year as a wide receiver tight end hybrid. So I don't really know if I want to test the waters there. I'm going to look at linebacker because I just don't think that one solid year from linebacking group is going to be good enough. They tested the waters last year in the third round with what, like Ernest Jones? I think that's his name. Um, from North Carolina State. Yes. Yeah. Which I like year. that pick. There's a guy named DeMarvion Overshone oh. that is going to be one hell of an interesting prospect here. He's the reaction. same size as Kyle Hamilton, just without the yes. physicality, but playing linebacker. I mean, what? The Rams don't have much. And DeMarvion uh, Overshone. Yeah, I think it's Kenny had, Young that's. Uh, he's, he's okay. Yeah. That's about it. Exactly. That's about it. I'm. I'm going to say Mike Jones returns. I think oh, that's yeah. Fair. He's, he's hardly any seeing any playing time. Yeah. Yeah. And looking at the next guy, Brian Asamoah, he, or Asamoah, I, it, he is somebody I'd consider. Owen Popo as well, someone I'd consider. I just think you go after a dude who's kind of like that safety linebacker hybrid. They have a lot of them on the roster as it is um, in the safety room. I just think that he has potential at a linebacker. He has some big flaws in his game, but he's shown recently that I believe it was in the Oklahoma game. He has some very, very, very big impactful plays. So yeah. Yeah. Go no, with Marvion. I will say like I have Popo, uh, Overshone and uh I was it Asamoa. They're all mm-hmm. like these athletic freaks that are in similar yeah. tiers that yeah. just like they have the ability to do a lot like in coverage yeah. just haven't yeah um and honestly i would say osmo is probably he, he's the guy that really cleaned up his uh tackling this year we're mm-hmm. overshown <laughs> you know he's but overshown's sweaty. made the bigger plays this year while Popo yeah. is like this the middle child you know it's real well weird. the rams are all about big plays that's why they You're got two two out in the second You're not wrong uh, so I thought about this one a little bit. Um, not for long, though. I'm going to take my boy coming off the ACL injury. Let's see if he's here. Zion Toy Paloa Fetty mm-hmm. out of Washington, dude. The guy came yep. in, just played 10 snaps this past week. After coming off an ACL injury in April, four pressures, dude. Like ZTR, dude, was like, who, who, 
who is this guy? And he was like, <laughs> forgot about me. The guy's got a small sample size, only started four games last year because of the short Pac-12 schedule. But now he's back. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for the guy, man. I, I really loved this dude. He's really good. Really good. And he shed it. Really good. Supposedly shed it 20 pounds. Doesn't look like he shed it 20 pounds. Oh. I think he tweeted maybe closer to like the 10 range. But the dude came in looking real quick. I remember first pass rush. Um, he came in, stunt stunt move, just like swallowed up the middle, man. Ugh, de- mm. delicious. Well, for the Buccaneers, I know you don't like this guy at all. Oh, gosh. Uh-oh. But the secondary still needs help, man. I don't like still this. Still needs help. Oh, you're talking about right? Mikhail Wright. Yeah. It's not I, that I don't I, like him. It's just, you know, I, I got some hangups. I don't like Josh yeah. Job hate him. But <laughs> a guy who I would consider there, um, sneaky one is Riley Moss out of Iowa. He's a freak. Dude, yeah, dude uh, runs a monster, yeah. Yeah. He's a and beast. we saw how like ugh, this past week with Purdue. Oh yeah. yeah, his boy, yeah. uh his teammate there, Matt Hankins, man, really got exposed. Oh yeah. Um Buffalo Bills, man. Um, mm. first things first, I want to kind of think about the interior here. I do like my boy Zion. I don't know if I like him specifically for this. Mm. Uh, then there's a, a guy I'd take, yeah. I like, I like honestly, Kellen Dyche. Like, I feel better about him mid third. Uh, there's Max Mitchell, too. Those are two guys that and might end up being guards. I know you like Ezzy. Um, Abino, not that much, not that much. I know, I, I think. You're the one that turned me on to him because uh, mm-hmm. I was watching his Memphis stuff. And I think he's played pretty well there at TCU, but they're real simplistic yeah. as well. Uh, all right. Uh, I don't feel great about any of that. Um, I'm not going running back because Zach Moss is starting to emerge. Well, it's not like, you know, outstanding, but like it's it's yeah. it's still the running back position, man. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Uh. I might want to get meaty in the middle, man. There's somebody I'm looking at in the middle. Yeah, I'm thinking Travis Jones. Oh, no. No? Wait, hold on. I'm all about Haskell. Haskell Garrett. Dang, dude. I got Haskell He's Garrett. Beast. I got him as a third rounder. I mean, oh. the, we're, we're at the end of the second. We are at so. the but like, <laughs> I also got like two or three guys ahead of him, too. Really? Yeah. I mean, to be fair... Um, two of them are upside guys, and okay. the other one is having a pretty banger year. Uh, at Alabama mm. in Mathis, dude, Travis Jones is three hundred twenty eight pounds at thirteen percent body fat. The what the hell? He's a hefty boy without being hefty. Holy shit! Looks like uh last pick of this round, man. I'm going Travis Jones, dude. That upside is ridiculous. Yeah, dude. So that's gonna be the second. What an interesting second, dude. For the people, though. Check out tomorrow. Oh yeah, three. dude. Let us know what you think in the uh, comment section below. And yeah, until tomorrow, man. Third round, man. Let's get this freaking show on the road. Well, oh, not yeah. for y'all. Next video, but later. Next video. Bye. <laughs>